Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. If you're just tuning in, welcome. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime, unabridged stories, and other old-world medias just for you to fall asleep to or relax to. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. If you would like to listen to the standalone media, we have included a link in the description. Our last series followed the Frontier Man, but we're going to switch gears to the Adventures of the Falcon. Hailing from the 1940s, the hard-boiled spy drama is now around 80 years old. If you can provide proof of your existence when it released as a syndicated radio series, I will personally come visit and cook you a continental breakfast. Without further ado, let's get to listening. We invite you to listen to The Adventures of the Falcon as Mike Waring solves The Case of the Ace of Spades. There's one thing you learn working as a private detective. A strong offense is the best defense. As a case in point, I give you Jimmy Valenti. Uh, Mr. Valenti is the boy wrestling with a mess of spaghetti at Joe's Little Italy. And there's no question who's going to win. And as Jimmy finishes his opponent, the verdict is rendered by a ringsider. Well, that's one dish they won't have to wash. Huh? I was just admiring your technique. Maybe you'd like to give me a lesson. Anytime you say, Mr. Valenti. Who are you? Ace Kelly. Who? Ace Kelly. Oh, you're the guy from St. Louis Tommy Harris told me about. Uh Uh-huh. Sit down. Thanks. Have a drink? What do you got there, vodka? Yeah. Well, that's good enough for me. I was expecting you last Wednesday. I know. When did you get in? Last Wednesday. Why didn't you call me then? I couldn't find a phone booth. Look, you might as well learn it now, Ace. I don't like wise guys. Few people do. Besides, I'm not sure you could hold on this job. You don't look so tough to me. Want to feel my muscle? I told you I don't. I know. You don't like wise guys. Let's face it, Mr. Valenti. We don't seem to be very compatible, so I... Sit down. Was that a man? What's the matter, Ace? Don't you know when you're being kidding? Oh, is that what it was? Sure. I just wanted to see if you can take it. Well, I'm not very good at that, Mr. Valenti. You see, I only learned to dish it out. Hey, that's pretty cute. Yeah, it was something I heard on an old Mike Hammer show. <laughs> hey, you know something? I'm a cop. You really are. Sure, that's why they call me Ace. Funny Harris didn't mention you were such a funny guy. I guess he wanted it to be a surprise. Uh-huh. How much he tell you about me? Very little. Well, uh... I run a small place on 76th Street where a fellow can have a nice sociable evening. Uh, if you don't mind the cost. That's right. Some people don't like to pay for their fun. That's where you come in. Now, let me show you something. What's that? IOUs for 68 grand. They all given to you by one party? No, there are two of them. A Dickie Maynard and a Jackie Nadler. You think you can collect? Well, I hate to go mercenary on you, Mr. Valenti, but uh, what's in it for me? Ten percent of everything you bring in. And suppose I don't bring in a dime. I thought you were the kind of a guy who don't take no for an answer. These guys good for the money? They certainly are. Take this Dickie Maynard. His old man was in the booze business, but big. And Jackie Nadler owns Marlboro Ballroom. Good enough. But if they don't pay, you don't collect. Get me? I got you, Mr. Valenti, but let's not even consider that possibility. I came a long way from St. Louis. I'd hate to go back empty-handed. Just a second. I said just a second. Well, what do you want? Now, that's what I call a leading question, Dickie. Uh, You are Richard Maynard. I asked you what you wanted. $24,000. Twenty-four thousand dollars. What? Huh? Uh, twenty-four thousand six hundred, to be exact. Where'd you get that IOU? Well, thereby hangs the tail. May I come in? No. You know, if I thought you really meant that. Are you going to get out of here? Now relax, Maynard. You'll live longer that way. My name's Ace Kelly. I don't care if, if it's uh, uh, Jimmy Valenti. Yeah. Now go on, beat it. And uh, what about your IOU? Are you kidding? That thing isn't worth the paper it's written on. Now, if there's one thing I admire, it's a man who knows his rights. Well, I know mine. Well, I don't suppose you'd consider waving them, huh? Don't make me laugh. Even if I put it to you like this? 
Slip of your own. If you think I enjoy doing this, manager, you're absolutely right. I guess I'm just a great big bully hit. Hello, Jimmy. What are you doing here, Martha? Well, if he's modern and won't come to Mohammed. Are you nuts? If I am, it's all your fault. Oh, darling, you don't know how I've missed you. Go on, Martha. Clear out. I'm expecting somebody. Who is she? Not that it's any of your business, but it ain't a she. Now, go on, blow. Are you sure you really want me to? Am I sure? Oh, Jimmy, we were made for each other. Don't tell me you forgot Monday night. Look, without hands. Mm. I'm wild about you, darling. I never knew anybody like you. Hands off. <laughs> that doesn't fool me. Hmm? You're mad about me, and that proved it. Yeah, something you are not. You can beat me all you want, but that won't make any difference. All right, Martha. Remember, you asked for it. Well? Oh, I guess I ought to apologize. Don't you believe in knocking, Ace? Yeah, I did, Jimmy. But uh, I guess you two had other things on your mind. Why don't you drop dead? Oh, don't get me wrong, honey. I didn't mean to spoil your fun. Well, listen, Go on, you... Martha. Clear out. They had no right to I say I said that. clear out. All right, Jimmy. But you will call me, won't you? I'm staying with the police. Are you still here? Remember, darling, you promised. Sweet kid. Anybody ask you, Ace? No. And keep your opinions to yourself. How'd you make out? Well, you, you know, for these things take time. So you didn't collect a dime? Not yet. And what'd you come here for? Well, I just thought maybe you'd want me to check in. All right, so you checked in. Anything else on your mind? No. Nope. And suppose you check right out and don't bother coming back unless you got something to give me, and I don't mean conversation. <laughs> I think New York will bear up under the laws. Well, we're holding a Dick Maynard for the murder. We'd like you to get him out. Then obviously he didn't do it. Well, this is going to floor you, Falcon, but I think he did. But of course you're going to prove what mad fools we cops are. So come on down and make like a radio private eye. <laughs> In a moment, we'll return to The Adventures of the Falcon. And now back to The Adventures of the Falcon. It just goes to prove there's a little good in everyone. Here, Jimmy Valenti, by getting himself knocked off, got me a client. And an hour later, I was down at headquarters with the capable Sergeant Corbett acting as combined guide and MC. You know, if you play your cards right, Mike, you may be able to get this sexy Maynard out. All you need is a hacksaw. Well, that's real sharp. I bet you heard that on a hope show. I did. All right, Daniels, open them up. Hey, Maynard. Yeah? We got company. Have fun, kid. You the Falcon? That's right. Well, what took you so long? Well, you know how narrow-minded some people are, Maynard. So I thought I'd better put some clothes on before I came down here. You realize I've been in this rat hole since 9 o'clock? If you think this is bad, where did you get a load of same thing? Don't be so funny. We might as well get one thing settled wearing. When I pay for something, I expect service. Tell me something, Maynard. Do you have to make an effort to be this unpleasant, or does it come naturally? What? You heard me. I've got a good mind to walk right out of here. Well, what's stopping you? A sergeant named Corbett. I'd hate for him to say I told you so. Did you kill Jimmy Valenti? Don't be ridiculous. And why did they pick you up? Well, you know the police? Sure, so I'm positive they must have had a reason. What went with you and Valenti? I, um... I owed him some money. How much? I can't remember offhand. Come on, Maynard, don't give me that. Well, it was, um... It was around 25000 How'd you lose it? 
in a poker game in this place? Why didn't you pay off? Now, it may be news to you, Waring, but gambling debts aren't legally collect collectible. You must have studied law with Mr. District Attorney. So when you decided to stand on your rights, Valenti thought that he could intimidate you by sending a gunman around. You wouldn't happen to know this gunman's name. I certainly do. It was Ace Kelly. And I take it this Mr. Kelly was the one who gave you that shellacking. Yes. And now if there's anything else you'd like to know... No, I think I've got enough to hold me. How soon are you going to get me out of here? That all depends on whether or not I give in. What? What are you talking about? Well, I've never thrown a case in my life, but you don't know how badly I'm tempted now. Keep your fingers crossed, Maynard. It's going to be quite a battle. <laughs> It's all very flattering, Larry, but I still don't see why you bothered to look me up. I thought that was pretty obvious, Ace. You were employed by Valenti. A lot of people were. Yes, but doesn't it strike you as odd that the man is killed less than 24 hours after you go to work for him? Well, I never could hold down a job for long. Would you care to hazard a guess as to who killed him? What about your client? I hate to say this, Ace, but I don't think Maynard was a boy. I don't know. He seems like a pretty good prospect to me. And naturally, you say that in your position. My position? Well, you might have turned the trick yourself. Uh, that I never considered. Well, think about it for a minute. It's a possibility we mustn't overlook. You know, Waring, I like you. Why, Ace, this is so sudden. Well, I'm a creature of impulse, so I'll tell you what I'll do. You know a girl named Martha? Martha who? Oh, well, that's where the mystery comes in. I never did catch her last name, but I know she's living at the Clayton. Why should I go to the trouble of running her down? Well, uh, she was Valenti's uh, sparring partner. That's very interesting. Got any other information I can use? Yeah, if you run into her, make sure you watch yourself in the Clayton. Yes? Hello, Martha. Martha. Well, isn't that your name? Now, look, mister... Don't get me wrong, Miss Barnum. I just want to make sure I've got the right girl. Did you know a Jimmy Valenti? What? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, may I... Uh... You're uh, wasting your time, mister. Where is the name? Mike Waring. I'm a private detective. You're still wasting your time. I don't know anything about the murder. But you do know something about Valenti. Now, why don't I sit down and you can tell me all about him? Why should I? It always helps. Helps who? Uh, that remains to be seen. You were in love with Valenti, weren't you? What if I was and not ashamed of it? But when he tried to brush you off... Who told you that? A gentleman named Ace Kelly? Well, Mr. Kelly is a dirty, filthy liar. Jimmy was crazy about me. He had a funny way of showing it. I didn't mind. Even when he cuffed you around? Don't be a fool. It only proved that he loved me. Hmm, well, they say you learn something new every day. And how long has this great romance been flourishing? Two weeks. As long as that, huh? Oh, you stupid idiot. What do you know of love? Very little, apparently. Get out. But we haven't finished our little talk. Are you going to get out of here? Uh, you won't believe it, Martha, but this happens practically every week. Just as I start to roll, the woman in the case always orders me out. Oh? Do they all have guns, too? Uh, no, that's why I won't even stop to argue with you. Night, Angel. I wouldn't have missed it for the world. It isn't Martha. Uh, you'll excuse the informality, but I never did learn your last name. Mr. Waring did. Well, he's the persevering kind. What's your name? I intend to. Say, uh, is that thing loaded? I know a good way for you to find out. Why don't you tell him about me? Well, I guess I'm just a big old flapper, Martha. Ace, I asked you something. Well, you see, Martha... Uh, Mr. Waring represents a boy named Dickie Maynard. So what's that got well, to do with me? Well, he doesn't think Maynard killed Valenti, so he was looking for other candidates, see? And when he brought me into the picture, I figured we might as well make it a group shot and include you. You know what you're going to get for that? Oh, now, you wouldn't really shoot me, would you? Oh, can you give me one good reason why I shouldn't? Well, I can give you a million, but I don't think any of them would have as much sense as that. Oh, let me go! Let Come me on, go. Babe, lay that hey, pistol down. Oh. Come on. <laughs> Ah. Holy 
And now, what do you think is going to happen oh, to you? You think funny I dare you to hit me. You called it. Go on, see if I'm afraid. No, I don't think you are, Martha. I think you enjoy it. What? And if that's your idea of fun, I'm just the boy to accommodate you. Oh! <laughs> Mike, how's it going? How should it go, Corbin? Oh, you want to see Maynard again? Not particularly, but I'm afraid I'll have to. Who's that? Mike Waring. It never occurred to you, Mr. Waring, that I... What's he locking up for? Uh, I guess he doesn't trust you. What? You mean I've got to stay here? Uh-huh. What the devil have you been doing? Oh, I've been having myself a ball. You know, I've got a mind to get... Don't a... kid yourself, Maynard. You haven't got a mind... If you had, you wouldn't be in this spot. Just who do you think you're talking to? The most obnoxious client I've ever been privileged to serve. Now, will you give way. that tongue a rest? Did you ever hear of a girl named Martha Barnum? No. You sure? I'm pot. Oh, wait a minute. Is she a little blonde? That's right. Yes, she was at Valenti's place the night of the game. She walked in and she made a test of herself. What happened? Valenti threw her out. Why didn't you tell me that before? You didn't ask me. Well, that's good reason. Did anything else happen during the game that I should know about? Mm. No. Were you the only big loser? Well, no, there were a couple of us. Who were the others? And see, a, a man named Lou Hirsch. What did he go for? I didn't want to make out the check. Then he didn't give Valenti an IOU? No. But who else besides you? Um, Jackie Nadler. The boy who owns the Marlboro Ballroom? Yes, I think so. How much was Nadler clipped for? Around 40000 Hmm. I bet you boys were betting as much as a nickel and a dime at a clip. Very funny. Yeah, I guess not. Why didn't you tell me about Nadler before? For the very simple reason... I know, reason that... I know. I didn't ask you. All right, Maynard. I may want to talk to you again, so don't go away. Sergeant. Jackie Nadler around. Who wants to know? Mike Waring, I'd like to come over and see you. I don't think I can squeeze you in, Waring. I'm a busy man, you know what I mean? Yeah, but a jury might take up even more of your time. Haven't you seen the papers? Yeah, and it's terrible about the Russians. I was referring to the local news. Did you read about Jimmy Valenti? No, I don't believe I did, but you understand, Waring, I got other problems in my mind, you know what I mean? Well, I'm working for a fellow named Dickie Maynard. Glad to hear it. He had some trouble with Valenti over a gambling debt. So? So, it just occurred to me you did, too. Where'd you pick that up? From Mr. Maynard. Well, he's crazy. I didn't know Valenti a penny. My client says otherwise. Who cares about your client? Apparently no one. Doesn't that make you feel sorry for him? I can't tell you how much. And maybe you'd like to swap places with him. Forget it, Mike. I don't think it's in the cards. You know what I mean? No, I don't, Jackie. But don't bother explaining. You'll only have to go through it again for the police. You know what I mean? Sergeant, this Jackie Nadler's our boy. Well, if you say so, Mike. I say so. He was in the same poker game the night Dickie Maynard was taken to the cleaner. Oh, then you admit now that Maynard had a motive. I never said he didn't. But Jackie Nadler has a better better one. How do you figure that? He was a bigger loser. And now he denies he owed Valenti any money. Well, maybe he didn't. Oh, don't be a sap, Corbett. It's obvious Jackie's lying. If you boys are smart, you'd turn up his IOU. Well, then I guess we're smart. What? Take a look at this. Well, that isn't Jackie's IOU. I thought it was. Where'd you get this? Mr. Nadler was nice enough to loan it to us for our investigation. But it's smart paid in full. Uh-huh. Now, I don't want to rush you, Falcon, but it's getting late and your client's still in the bridge. Yes. And if you're going to show us how a smart private dick operates, you'll never find a better time. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll return to The Adventures of the Falcon. And now back to The Adventures of the Falcon. What is it the poet said about the best laid plans? Anyway, after Sergeant Corbett dropped his bombshell that Jackie Nadler had no motive to kill Jimmy Valenti, 
I was thrown for a loss, and Sergeant Corbett didn't miss the opportunity to pick up the ball. Well, I gotta hand it to you, Falcon. You certainly outdid yourself this time. Now hold it, Sergeant. That IOU doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't? No. How do you know where Jackie Nader got it? Well, what difference does it make? It's marked paid in full. Well, what does that prove? Anybody could have written it, including Jackie. Oh, now, look, Well, Mike. couldn't he? And why didn't he tell me about it when I phoned him? Well, maybe he just doesn't like you. You know, that's possible, too. Mm, I don't doubt it. At the moment, I'm not even fond of myself. Well, you got a partner there. Well, I still... Wait a minute. I got an idea. Oh, no. Spare me that. There's one man who might know if Jackie actually redeemed that IOU. Who? Ace Kelly. I got a hunch for Lent he brought him in from St. Louis just to take care of accounts receivable. Oh, now cut it out. You're breaking my heart. Well, does it hurt to check? No, but I can tell you one thing. If this idea doesn't pay off, it certainly ain't going to do you much good. I bet you... Well, what are you staring at? You know, I would have sworn this was Mr. Kelly's apartment. Would you? I can't get over it. You recognize this, Sergeant? Mm, no, can't say as I do. Who is it, Martha? Only us, Ace. Eh? Well, this is a surprise. If you're surprised, think of me. Oh, you mean Martha? Uh-huh. Now, well, that's a switch I never expected. Uh, what happened to your eye, Angel? I, uh, fell over myself. I bet you enjoyed the trip. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing, but I'm sure you and Ace will be very happy. You're so suited to one another. Now, look uh, here. Don't you... let him get under your skin, honey. You know, Mike, I don't know why I put up with your foolishness. You like me, remember? Oh, yeah, but I'm a uh, fan. All right, all right, fellas. Now, that's enough. What do you guys want, anyway? Did you ever hear of Jackie Nadler? Why? Because Valenti held his IOU, and I bet the sergeant here, Jackie, never paid off. Well, that's where you're wrong. What? <laughs> I told you so. Well, listen, Ace, are you sure of that? Positive. I picked up the money myself. Do you remember the time? I must have been uh, around 6.30 that night. Thanks, Kelly. That clinches it. I don't see why, sergeant. Because that confirms Jackie Nadler's story. Well, it's good enough for you, Cody. Yeah, it certainly is. And what are you waiting for? Uh... You better go along with him, Ace. All right, quit the clown I'm wearing. You know better. What happened to that money Nadler paid you? You tell me. Okay. You kept it for yourself. You said Nadler redeemed his IOU at 6.30. So? So Jim Valenti was killed at 5. And if you picked up the money an hour and a half later, you must have been working on your own. What's he talking about? I'm sorry, Martha, but that's life. Just when the cards seem to be coming your way, someone has to trump your ace. <laughs> Oh, no. Not touch her. I wasn't going to. 
Is it, Dave? Well, that's the stupidest question of the year. Find a phone and call a sister, Carol Ford. No. No, on second thought, just call the cops. I'll handle this. so I'd like to get right down to business. You told me you found my sister. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, one of my boys traced her to Chicago. Uh, let me see. Yeah, March 14th, she grabbed the California Limited from Los Angeles. She met this guy at the depot, and the two of... I'm not particularly interested in details. Where's Nancy now? Well, she, um... Uh, she got to New York on the 12th. Where is she now? Like living? Go on. Well, 500 bucks a 
will guarantee it. Will you take a check? Don't be funny. I only got 120 on me. Yeah, when will I get the rest? Tomorrow, if your information is legit. All right, fork it over. Like I said, when Carol Ford left my office, uh, she hinted she was going to take care of you. She was just talking. No, not her. This is one little girl who believes in action. I tailed her when she left. She went down to a gin mill on 34th Street, and she saw a fellow named Jill Milo. Who's that? Hood. They had a nice long talk. Uh, what makes you think I was the subject? Well, I got good long ears. Then she went to a phone booth, and who do you think she called? Me. That's right. Mm -hmm. All right, Stacy, let's have that dough. What the? That 120 I just gave you. Oh, now, wait a minute. I can't afford to. Hey, shut that up. You little chisel. Who do you think you were dealing with? What are you, Lord? Go on, hand it over before I break every bone in your body. You I promise you won't be able to talk for a week if you don't quit storming. What do you say? Do you want some more? No, no, no. I know you'd see the light. Now make it fast, Stacy. I got a call to make. Well, you got enough lead in you to build a B-29. 
Where is she? Where's who? The brunette I was talking to. Well, there was nobody around when we found you. What's her name? I don't know. I didn't get it. But was it a pickup? No, I had an appointment to meet her. She's the one who plugged you? No, the shot came from the other side of the boathouse. You think it might have been her husband? I tell you, it was nothing like that. She thought I was a boy named Duke Mantell. Well, if your purpose was to confuse me, Mr. Waring, you succeeded. This Mantell claimed someone was shaking him down. I was to pose as him and meet the blackmailer when I showed... There was this gal. Well, what were you expecting? Nothing like what I got. You have no idea who she is. Not at all. But I'm going to find out. Hey, wait a minute. You can't leave like that. You're forgetting something. I can't see what? Your pants. You better wear them tonight, baby. It's awful cold outside. in learning I kept that date for you last night. It was a nice piece of work. What are you talking about? Setting me up for a clay pigeon. Setting you up? Yeah, someone who thought I was you took a shot at me. Can't believe it. Would you like me to bleed a little to prove well, it? Well, there must be some mistake. Yeah, it was all mine. I should have spotted that blackmail story of yours for a phony. You knew someone was gunning for you. Now, who was it? What difference does it make? What difference does it make? Maybe you don't think much of breathing, but I kind of like it, and I resent anyone trying to break me of the habit. Now, who's the girl? None of your business. Now, we'll see about that. Get your coat. Don't talk like a child. What? I wouldn't try that again. You didn't have that arm in a sling. Don't let that stop you, Duke. It won't. You see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I see. And what do you intend to do with that gun? Well, I'm a funny kind of a guy, Waring. While I might have objections to slugging a cripple, I got none to plugging one. Now, get Get the credit. That would dispose of me and leave him free to go on his way. 
Yeah, yeah. If you got sent up for knocking me off, that might suit him fine. What do you think? I think if there's anything to your theory, Mr. Mantell and I ought to have another chat. Only this time, I'll have the gun. So long, Carol. I'll be seeing you. Hello, Miss Ford. Mr. Waring. And company. 
mind if we come in? I most certainly do. I wouldn't be too strenuous in my objections, Angel. This gentleman is with the police. Does he have a warrant? I don't need one. Now, look here. Yeah. Look. Hi, Jeff. Well, if it isn't Phil Stacy, what are you doing here? It's none of your business. Maybe I can guess. He came up here with some advice. Is there anything wrong with that? That all depends. Now, purely as a guess, I'd say you were tipping her off to skip town. How would you know that? Well, he probably showed you that the murder of Duke Mantell might have the cops around asking embarrassing questions. Well, looks like I was right. Yeah. Too bad your timing was off. I'm sorry, Miss Ford. You should be. If you were 20 minutes earlier, we would have missed her. Look, Waring, you got the wrong angle on this. If you think she's responsible for Duke Mantell's murder... No, I don't. I assume... That's because you wanted to. Look, Mike, you know what you're talking about. I think so, Sergeant. Just ask yourself this question. What would you have thought if you found Miss Ford gone? Well, that she was guilty, which is just what Stacy wanted you to think. But what are you babbling about? You killed Matt. What are you nuts? If I am, it comes from dealing with squirrels like you. All right, Sergeant, take him to his cage. invite you to listen to the adventures of the falcon as Mike Waring solves the case of the wandering wife. There's one thing you learn working as a private detective. If you keep your eyes open, you're bound to reach a goal. The case in point, I give you Larry Barker. Larry is the rugged looking boy making his way down the fourth floor corridor of the Harris building. Right now, he's looking for trouble. When he stops in front of room 419, the odds are 20 to 1. He'll find it. John? Yeah? I'm looking for Frank Pulaski. Well, if you don't find him, it ain't because you don't try in the right places. You Pulaski? That's right. I'm Larry Barker. The bookie? I think we have to go into that. Well, whatever you say, Mr. Barker. Sit down. Thanks. What can I do you for? That remains to be seen. Someone told me you were one of the best private detectives around. Well, naturally, I ain't gonna deny it. I will soon find out. Take a look at this picture. Mm-hmm. Okay, the head. That happens to be my wife. That's even better. I don't like those kind of jokes, Pulaski. Sorry. Think you could watch it for me? Well, I don't know why not. Her first name's Sheila. Sheila? Yeah. I want to follow day and night. I want to know everyone she sees but everyone. Can you handle it? Well, now, let's see if we understand each other, Mr. Parker. You suspect your wife's running around. Did I say that? Yeah. <laughs> Why else would you want a sick of tail on it? That's none of your business. Now, either you want the job or you don't. Well, it's uh, going to run into a lot of dough. So? So? How about an advance? No dice. Well, for a job like this, I'll have to put on two extra men. I don't care how many you put on. In my business, I only pay off on results. Well, I don't do business that way. I do. Well, in that case, we're both wasting time. You've got to find yourself another boy. i got to find myself another client. Let's hope we both know where to look. <laughs> Taxi? Taxi? Can I help you, honey? Taxi? 
taxi. You don't seem to be having much luck. Maybe I'll do better calling a car. Now, now, wait a minute, baby. I ain't trying to pick you up. Taxi. I'm in it, Mrs. Parker. Look, how did you know my name? Oh, you'd be surprised what I know about you, Sheila. Uh, Maybe you'd like to look at my card. Frank Pulaski, private investigation. Mm -hmm. Your hubby was in to see me yesterday. Larry? Uh Uh-huh. Well, what did he want? Well, now, this ain't no place to talk. I, um, I got a brand new Nash around the corner, and... You can say anything you've got to right here. Well, it's kind of embarrassing, Sheila. I don't like to be seen taking money from a woman in a public thoroughfare. What are you talking about? Well, naturally, you can't expect me to uh, divulge this kind of information for free. You're absolutely right, Mr. Pulaski. So you keep your information and I'll keep my money. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm not interested. Well, this really concerns you. I doubt it. Taxi? Well, looks like I ain't going to make a buck from the Barker family no how. But uh, I like you better than I do your husband. I mean it. If I were you, Sheila, I'd watch my step. Larry's checking up on you. What do you mean? That's what I said. As a matter of fact, I did a little checking on you myself. Why, you... All right, take it easy. As far as I can learn, you never once stepped out of line. So what's the matter with that husband of yours anyway? He must be out of his mind. You may be right. Well, if I was you, honey, I'd never put up with it. Thank you for your advice, Mr. Pulaski. I'll let you know if I take it. Just a second. I said just a second. What's the big idea? Oh, hello. You must be Mike Waring. Well, if you're looking for him, I'd be a fool to deny it. Come on in, Angel. The name is Barker. Mrs. Barker. I don't like to be formal with my clients. And what makes you think I'm going to be a client? You mean this is a social call? Well, that's even better. Sit down. Thank you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Drink? I make a great Smirnoff martini. What? Vodka, you know. Oh. Well, if you don't mind, Mr. Waring, I'd like to get right down to business. All you pretty women are alike. Okay, Sheila. When do you want me to start looking? When do I want you to start looking? Well, don't you want evidence for a divorce? How did you know that? Well, you announced yourself as Mrs. Barker, and then I took a look at your left hand. That little white ring of flesh told me you were wearing a wedding band until a couple of hours ago. Mm, That's pretty obvious. Always is, after someone points it out. What's your husband do? He's a betting commissioner. You wouldn't be married to Larry Barker. Yes. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Oh, I'm impressed. I hope you do as well on your next marriage. There's not going to be a next marriage. I just want a divorce. I don't even want alimony. Why? Have you ever been married to a jealous man? And not recently. I'm not clowning, Mr. Waring. Sorry. Larry and I were married six years ago. And ever since the first day, he suspected the worst. Does he have reason? No. You know, I believe you. Thank you. That's quite all right. But if Larry had no cause to be jealous, why is he? I don't know, and I don't care. He's killed everything I ever felt for him. He even tried to hire a private detective to keep tabs on me. Who? A man named Frank Pulaski. That was the final straw. I don't blame you. All right, Angel. I'll let you know when I come up with something. Yes, sir, can I help you? Is Larry Barker in? Well, he's very busy. He can't be that busy. Tell him Al Farinacci is here. What is it, Joyce? There's a gentleman to see you, Mr. Barker. Can't you handle it? He wants to speak to you personally. His name is Al Farinacci. Oh, well, send him right in. Please go in. Thanks. Where do I go? First door to your right. Come on in, Farinacci. Glad to see you, Mr. Barker. What have you got? Plenty. I told you my outfit delivers the goods. Lucky you didn't get yourself tied up with that Frank Pulaski. What's the story? Just what you thought. Your wife's been seeing some guy on the sly. I knew it. I knew it. She spent practically the whole afternoon in his apartment. Who is he? Mike Waring. The Falcon. Yep. And you know his rep. I've heard a couple of stories. Well, there you are. It's just a case of putting two and two together. All right, Frank. That's beat it. What about my check? I'm in with Now, look, Mr. Bart. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? Well, I'll deal... Just for that, you wait. Joyce! Yes? Show him up. Never mind. I can find my own way. 
What happened? Nothing. That wasn't the impression I got listening at the door. So you were eavesdropping. I guess I should be ashamed of myself. I got a good mind. Sure you have, Larry. Mine's the one that's bad. You think in nine years I would have gotten smarter. What are you babbling about? Just reminiscing. Well, do it on your own time. I don't have any time on my own. Every minute belongs to you, remember? Are you going to start that again? Yes. I'm entitled to know where I stand. You've been stalling me long enough. Nine years. Nine rotten years. Well, now you've got grounds for a divorce. You're crazy. I heard what Farinacci said. Sheila's been running around with a Mike Waring. Shut up. I'm... You didn't actually think I was going to marry you. Yes, I did. You stupid little fool. My Sheila's worth a million like you. She's no better than I am. Ask Waring. You keep your mouth shut, do you understand? Don't you dare to say a word about her. I only hope Mr. Waring is as gallant. Don't give it a thought, Joyce. He won't talk. I'll see to that personally. It's about time, Waring. How did you get in here? What difference does it make? Shut the door. I take it that gun is loaded. What do you think? I think I better shut the door. I understand you and my wife had a nice little talk today. Oh, you must be Larry Barker. How'd you guess? Oh, I'm real clever. How long have you been carrying on with Sheila? How long have I watched? You heard me. Yeah, but I'm sure I misunderstood. You think your wife and me? Yes. You've got a real nasty mind. Listen, you... Tell me something, Barker. How do you get like that? The way I see it, either you once took a beating from some woman... Nobody puts anything over on me. And I got another theory. You must be playing around yourself. What? Sure, that's it. So because you can't be trusted, you don't believe anybody else can. Well, you know I guess that good. means I'm right, huh? You're going to stay away from Sheila, do you understand? Who's going to make me? Me. <laughs> Come on, Mike. Uh, Time to rise and shine. Uh, uh, oh, are you going to lay there and pamper yourself? Who, who's that? So just open those big brown eyes and look. Uh, I wouldn't be Sergeant Corbett. <laughs> you giving odds? We, what are you doing here? Oh, no, that's no way to talk to a man who saved your life. Who saved my life? Help me up. Well, if I were you, kiddo, I'd stay right there. May save you another trip down. Who did this job on you? Never mind. It was Larry Barker, wasn't it? How did you know? Yeah, I'm psychic. And now about Barker. I'll take care of him. A couple of boys down at headquarters think you did already. What? Yeah. They found his body 20 minutes ago with three slugs in his brain. Oh, no. Oh, yes. And you'll die when you hear who they think put him there. <laughs> oh, you want to put your head on or will you go like that? moment, we'll return to the adventures of the Falcon. But first... And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. It just goes to prove you should never sleep in the daytime. Here, Larry Barker tucked me in. And when I awoke, a police sergeant named Sidney Corbett was standing over me. I couldn't make up my mind which was more frightening, Corbett's news or his face. Well, what's the matter, Mike? You look unhappy. Let me get this straight, Sergeant. Well, you got it straight. Larry Barker's been murdered. And you think I... Well, it's a possibility. You had a run-in with him. But when you found me, I was unconscious. Well, how do I know you weren't faking? Now, listen, you Schlemiel. Well, what are you getting so excited for? I said it was a possibility. The probabilities are something else again. Now, what was your trouble with Barker? He had some screwy idea I was horsing around with his wife. Were you? No. Oh, you're slipping. That ain't the Mike Waring I know and love. Sheila came to me to get her evidence for a divorce. Why? She got another guy on the string? Oh, no, she just couldn't stomach Larry anymore. He was crazy jealous. Well, I guess that problem's over now. Well, I hate to disagree with you, but I think her problems are just beginning. I don't see how. Well, you're not looking in the right places. <laughs> you say Barker was crazy jealous. He would have fought a divorce. So? So she took the other way of getting rid of him. You're nuts. Well, I would have bet you'd say that. Whenever you're stuck for an answer... I tell you, she didn't kill him, Sergeant. Uh, Why don't you scout around and find out who else had it in for Barker? You have any suggestions? Yes. Larry was playing around on the side. He practically admitted it to me. 
That's why he was ready to believe the worst of Sheila to justify himself. Well, assuming... Now, Mark, you, I say assuming there was another woman, so what? We'll know that when you find her. <laughs> you mean when you find her? You expect me? Uh-huh. <laughs> I've done my part. I found Sheila. <laughs> you get your own girl. Got your nerve? Yes, that's what they all say. Now, look, mister, I don't know who you are, but if you don't get out of here... You'll call a cop? Yes. Well, the number is State 49970. Oh, what are you waiting for? Who are you? Pulaski's my name, Frank Pulaski. I'm a private dick. You know, like the Falcon. What do you want? Well, why don't I sit down, huh? Uh, it's too bad about your boss. My boss? Larry Barker. Someone done him in. You're lying. Oh, you think so? We'll take a look at this headline. Will be killed in East Side Apartment, Lawrence Barker. Better known. Oh, no. You need a drink. No, I'm... Well, I do. Do you mind? Is, is this why you came here? Well, uh, not exactly. Well, I am. You see, the cops think his wife knocked him off. Well, they're crazy. Well, uh, she seemed like the best bet. Of course, uh, you and I know better. What do you mean? Well, Barker came into my office yesterday to hire me to keep tabs on his missus. That's a lie. He hired... Al Farinacci, sure. But that was only after I turned him down. You know, he was a tough man to get a buck out of. You'd think his wife would be more generous. What? Well, I thought she at least would let me have a hundred for tipping her off on what was going on, but no. So then I thought of you. I don't understand. Well, now, I'm a student of human nature... You can't believe how low people are. Get to the point. Yeah. Well, I wondered why a guy like Park would be watching his missus when she never went straight off the reservation. And then it occurred to me maybe he'd like to put on the war paint himself. I wouldn't know. Are you kidding? Who'd know better? Are you suggesting... Uh Uh-huh. You get out. Oh, you don't want to take that attitude, sweetie. Like I said, this is only a theory. Now, uh, for 500 clams, I'd be willing to forget it. Get out! Well, if I do, I'll go straight to Mike Waring. I don't care where you go. But you can't say later. I didn't give you a chance. If I will get you ten, Waring will be willing to take it. Yeah? Hiya, Waring. Do I know you? No, but think of what you've been missing. I'm willing to pass it up. Oh, you'll be making a great mistake. You're working for Sheila Barker, ain't you? Well? Well, how would you like to get her off? Maybe you better come in. Thanks. I don't believe you mentioned your name. I don't believe I did. It's Pulaski, Frank Pulaski. Oh. Now don't tell me you heard of me. Only this afternoon, Sheila Barker told me you were working for her husband. Oh, she's got the story twisted. Uh, he wanted me to go to work, but I couldn't see it. We uh, couldn't get together on a feet. That's tough. Well, it's tougher than you think. Imagine me sitting here with everything I know. And what do you know? Well, is it worth... Uh, 500 fish? It might be. Well, suppose I told you that Barker was playing around. I figured that out for myself. Yeah, but I know her name. Wouldn't she pay off? Hmm? Well, you must have braced her first. You know, you're pretty cute. I bet you say that to all the boys. Now, who's the girl? Uh, first, let me see the color of your dough. Come on, hey. Pulaski, who's the girl? Let go. I asked you something. Stop. Don't you ever do that again. Don't tempt me. Oh. You're going to pay for that. Put it on my bill. Now, what's her name? Well? Joyce. Joyce Crane. Where can I find her? At the Comstock. Thanks a lot, Pulaski. You've been a great help. That's okay, Waring. The pleasure was all mine. You'll be surprised what I do for you in the future. Hello. Whatever you're selling, Mr. I'm not interested. How do you know if you see my line? I'll take my chances. You can't afford to, Joyce. Aren't you being just a little bit familiar? If you think I'm obnoxious now, wait till you know me better. My name is Mike Waring. Well, hooray for you. You're not impressed? You have no idea. You can say everything you want to right there. Ah, everything? Look, you're not fooling me. I know Pulaski's been to see you. I kind of hoped it'd be a surprise. No, he announced his intention as he left. I see. And I see something else. What? Larry Barker was right. You wouldn't have made him a good wife. You're much too possessive. And you know uh, careful. what? Careful. There may be kiddies listening. 
But you are possessive. You proved it when you killed him. Get out. You're forgetting, Angel. I am out. You never invited me in. <laughs> Mr. Big Mouth. I had to go and remind her. Hey, buddy. Me? Yeah. I uh, wonder if you could settle an argument for me and my friend here. Now, what is it? He says you're Mike Waring. Well? And I got a gun that says you're going to get into this car. Well, who's right? Apparently, both of you. Get in. You fellas ought to be ashamed of yourselves. Things like this don't happen anymore. Don't they? Yeah, I guess they do. Well, whose lap do I sit on? Move over, Wally. Watch him. You know, I got a friend who won't believe this. He's a police sergeant. Think of that. You're not even impressed. You think his uh, feelings will be hurt? Absolutely. So why tell him? You talk too much, Wally. You may be right. Sure I am. I ought to know. I talk too much, too. All right, Wally. Let's find a nice, quiet spot where instead of all this dialogue, we can get a little action. will return to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's life for you. And obviously, somewhere along the line, I put my foot in it. Five minutes after Wally found his nice, quiet spot, that same foot was around my neck. The next thing I knew, I was at police headquarters, and it had begun to rain. But I was the only one getting wet. Sergeant Corbett was in charge of the downpour. All right, Sussman, once more. <laughs> Cut that out. You want to draw me? Well, I thought that would bring you around. You didn't have to do that. Well, it was too good an opportunity to waste. <laughs> uh, here's a towel. Thanks. Well, oh, you better get the back of your neck, Mike. You're not dry behind the ears. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> How did I get here, anyway? A prowl car found you in Red Hook. Recognizing you as my comrade in arms, they brought you here. Now, who did it? I don't know their names, but they were obviously hired by the same party who killed Larry Barker. You mean Sheila? Don't be a sap. They were hired by Joyce Crane. And who, pray tell, is Joyce Crane? She was Larry Barker's secretary. Only her time belonged to him out of the office as well. And the two punks who gave you that going over were hired by her? Yes. If you want a description... Oh, I wouldn't care to hear it. Now, look, Sidney. Yeah, we already picked them up. One is Wally Forbes, and the other is a boy named Tony Gilman. How do you know they're the right ones? Why, they admitted it. Oh. Well, then we shouldn't have any trouble getting him to confess that Joyce hired him. That I doubt. Now, look, Corbett. Well, what are you telling me to look for? This isn't television. They're friends of Frank Pulaski. What? Yeah. They were just doing him a favor. <laughs> now that I think of it, why did I lock him up? Well, they were doing me a favor, too. And tell me you're back again. I wouldn't slam the door, lover. This time I brought along a friend. This is Sergeant Corbin. How do you do? Look, Sergeant, I don't know what Waring told you. Well, that's you. just the trouble. He didn't tell me a thing. Maybe you can help out. May we come in? No. Well, I think we better. Is that an official request? Oh, I didn't flash my badge. Now, why can't we keep this on a friendly basis? Well, I don't like him. Me? Oh, the girl's got taste. Oh, sit down. Thanks. Now, what do you want to know? Well, Waring here has come up with a very interesting theory. You see, Joyce, there's one character in this little drama we've forgotten. Now, you don't believe that Sheila killed Larry Barker, do you? Yes, I do. You've changed your mind. It's a woman's prerogative. Well, let's hold Sheila in abeyance for a while. Let's get back to this character we've overlooked. Now, what's the name of the private dick Larry hired? You mean Pulaski? No, no, Pulaski never went to work for him. This is the boy who actually did the job. The one who tailed Sheila to my apartment. Al Farinacci. Paranacci, that's a name. What's he got to do with this? Well, let's suppose Larry never paid him for the job. He didn't. So that gives Farinacci a motive. You're crazy. The only reason Larry didn't pay him is because he was busy. 
But far not she expected to be paid right there and then. No, Larry had a right to check and see whether his information was McCoy. Once Larry found out Sheila hired you to get divorce evidence, he agreed to pay off. How do you know that? Because Larry told me as much. Then it's your theory... Sheila killed him. She knew she'd never be free any other way. You really want to see her burn, don't you? I most certainly do. Bloodthirsty little girl, ain't she? Well, what do you say, Mike? I say it's about time you did something. What are you mumbling about? She's the one we want. Are you out of your mind? That's possible, too, but it doesn't alter the conclusion. You killed Larry Bob. No. Yes, you were in love with him. Then why would I kill him? Because you were getting older every day. You went with him for nine years, always deluding yourself someday he'd marry you. When you finally woke up to the fact he was killing you, that was it. No. No. Can you prove that, Mike? Sure. When Barker came to my place, he accused me of running around with Sheila. Uh He slugged me before I had a chance to tell I was only working for her. But Joyce here claimed Barker told her that. That's what I mean. That's how I knew Joyce was lying. All right, Corbett. Fool everybody and make like a police sergeant. And now we invite you to listen to the adventures of the Falcon as Mike Waring solves the case of the Big Fix. There's one thing you learn working as a private detective. Haste doesn't always make waste. As a case in point, I give you Dutch Schneider. Dutch is a solid-looking citizen behind the mahogany desk at the Belvedere Club. He's a gambler by profession, but that doesn't mean he takes chances. No, Dutch likes to play it nice and safe. That probably explains why he stares with obvious disbelief at a light on his desk, which flicks on and off with appropriate sound effects. O'Neill. Yeah. What's going on out there? What do you think, Dutch? It's a raid. Are they doing any damage? Can't you hear it? No. I'll take my word for it. They're playing off a rough. I'm glad they're having fun. Who's in charge? I am, Mr. Snyder. Never mind, O'Neill. You want to see me? Yes. What's your name, officer? Corbett. Sergeant Corbett. Why wasn't I notified of this raid? Would you mind repeating that, please? I asked why I wasn't warned. Your boys must have done at least $100,000 worth of damage. Easy. You know who's going to pay for it? Oh. You. Oh, on my salary? Don't be silly. Anil. What is it, Doctor? Give me Arthur Hall on the phone. Oh, now I get it. Is Arthur Hall your contact man? That's right. Well, this is the funniest thing I've heard yet. You think so? I know so. So he clipped you, too. I'm surprised at you, Dutch. What are you talking about? I'll bet Arthur sold you a bill of goods that could keep us out of your hair if you paid off to him. Well? Well, he was kidding you. Arthur Hall has as much influence in New York as my brother-in-law. And even with me on the force, he can't get himself arrested. If Hall was bluffing, why wasn't my club knocked off before? Well, you're just lucky. We're understaffed, and we didn't get around to you. I see. And he can't get over it. Arthur Hall clipping a hip character like you. You're right, Sergeant. It is funny, but you'll pardon me if I don't laugh. Right now, the joke seems to be on me. What you are? Uh, yes. You're late? I, uh, I was detained at the office, Peggy. Why didn't you answer your phone? Dutch Snyder has been trying to reach you all evening. Oh? Did, did he call here? Mm-hmm. You know, Arthur, I got the idea he was a little annoyed with you. Why? What did he say? wasn't what he said, darling. It was the way he said it. Listen, Peggy, I, uh, I'm going to leave town for a few days. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, something, something's just come up. You remember Al Morris. Arthur, you don't have to explain. You know I trust you implicitly. When are you leaving? Right now. I'm, uh, going to Los Angeles. Oh, that explains it. That explains what? Why, North American Airlines called and confirmed your reservation to St. Louis. Well, they must have made a mistake. Yes. Hello, Peggy. Hello. Dutch. Uh, well, what are you doing here? Well, there are a couple of things I want to take up with you. Do you mind leaving us alone for a while, Mrs. Hall? Yes, very much. No, Peggy, come back. Peggy! That's the swell girl they got there. Listen. Listen, Dutch. I know what you're going to say. Good, then I won't have to say it. There was a slip-up. I've been on the phone all day. Those boys had no right to raid your place. Oh, but they did. Well, I, I, I've got an appointment to talk to the commissioner tomorrow. I don't see how you're going to manage it. What do you What do you mean? Well, to talk properly, you should have teeth. And I'm sorry. I don't think you're going to have many left. Oh! oh. oh. Are you 
George Kelk. Mm-hmm. Hi, Martha Hall. I spoke to you on the phone. Oh, yes. I'll be with you in a minute. I, uh, I've got to hear this record. Look, Kelk, I'm a busy man. Well, if you're in a hurry, Mr. Hall, you'd better take your business elsewhere. Well, I'll wait. That's the ticket. Pretty, isn't it? It's WC. Uh-huh. You know what's responsible for most of the troubles in this world, Mr. Hall? People assign the wrong values to things. Now, take music, for example. That's important. Because there's a common denominator. Look, Kelk, I didn't come over here for a lecture. Well, there's no extra charge. Mm-hmm. All right, Hall, what can I do for you? Want to do a job for me? Not particularly. But I'm a craftsman, Mr. Hall. I only accept commissions I like. I'll pay you $500. Oh, you're not even in my register. You'll have to go higher. A thousand. Well, that's a little better. Um, have you got the money on you right now? Well, yes, but it's, it's all I have at the moment. Well, it's enough for me. All right. Three, four, six, eight, eight, mm-hmm. Uh, what's the name of your party? Dutch Schneider. You know him? Uh, only by reputation. You the one who bounced you around? That's my business. As you say, Mr. Hall, it's your business. So if you'll allow me, I'll be getting down to mine. Yes, you Dutch Schneider? Right. Kelk is my name, Georgie Kelk. Kelk, is mm-hmm. Have I heard that name before? I don't know, have you? Well, sure, you're the... Go on, Dutch. You won't hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'd not take any chances. Well, frankly, it won't make much difference. Sit down. You, uh, mind if I smoke? Mm-hmm. Uh, try my brand. A match? Sure. Okay. Thanks. Where, uh, where do I get it, Kelk? Um, what's wrong with right here? Aren't you afraid of the noise? I guess you didn't notice the silence around this baby. Excuse me for trying to tell you your business. That's quite all right. You don't mind talking? Not at all. Oh, I see you go in for the classical. Mm-hmm. Whose album is that you've got on the Tchaikovsky piano concerto? Rubenstein. Oh, uh-huh. ever hear Horowitz play it? I like Rubenstein's better. It's got a lot more fire. Oh, you're out of your mind. No one can touch Horowitz when it comes to execution. <laughs> you ought to know. Well, that's all right. So tell me something, Dr. John. Why is it the nice guys always get it? Well, there's no reason why they should. <laughs> now, look, Kelk. I don't want to insult you, but uh, can't we talk this over? No, I'm afraid not. I know who put you up to it. it was Arthur Hall. Well, now, what difference does that make? A lot. You got nothing in common with Hall. Wouldn't you rather work for me? Oh, definitely. But it's uh, too late now. Why? You can't tell me you're afraid of Hall. I don't know what he gave you, but I'll pay you $10,000 for that gun. Fully loaded. Well, I don't know, Dutch. I've never done anything like this before. And if I did now, I, uh, I wouldn't want you to think that the money you're offering had... Any effect on my decision? Of course not. No, but there was, uh, there was something about that fellow Hall that just rubbed me the wrong way, you know? All right, Dutch. Get the dough. Hi. What? How did you get in here? Superintendent, I was a friend of yours. Good for you. I'm glad you made yourself at home. You don't mind my taking off my shoes? Not a bit. I like to see people comfortable. You ought to get some better reading material. There's a racing form you overlooked. No, I didn't. Last week. I'm terribly sorry, Miss... Uh... Hall, Peggy Hall. I need mean, Missy. And I'm the one to be sorry. Did I put my shoes back on? Why be formal? You know, Mr. Waring, you're a welcome change from most of the party detectives I know. You know many? I've got one in the family. Arthur Hall. Ever hear of him? Unfortunately. He's my husband. I once heard him say he'd never do business with me. It's a wonderful recommendation. That's what I thought. I think my husband's playing around. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Find out who the girl is and what their plans are. You bucking for a divorce? Mm Mm-hmm. How about your husband? Won't he fight it? No, I don't think so. I don't think so either. Oh, oh look, Sergeant, I'm busy. You're always busy, Waring. Why don't you take a little time out once in a while? I'm not crowning, Corbett. Neither am I. 
This lady's Peggy Hall, isn't she? How would you know? Well, I'm a detective, too. Like to see how I operate? Love to. Well, first, I went to your home, and the maid told me you left a message. That if anybody looked for you, you'd be closeted with a falcon here. What? Oh, Mike, you are a devil. Look, Corbett, what are you getting at? Didn't she tell you? No, all she told me is she wanted to get rid of her husband. And she did. We just found his body. Put your shoes on, Lucy. Those stone floors at headquarters can be awfully cold on your tootsies. In a moment, we'll continue with the adventures of the Falcon. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. cliche, it's always darkest before the dawn. And judging by the signs here, daybreak was way off. While Sergeant Corbett gazed about my office, I watched my client, Peggy Hall, put on her shoes. A little thing like that can tell you a lot. To me, it proved two things. One, my client was innocent. And two, she had lovely ankles. Like what you see, Will? I love it. You're going to hate me for asking this, Peggy, but did you kill your husband? the kind of a girl who would. Oh, you're a bounder, Mike. I know. I ought to wash my mouth out with soap. All right, Angel, who do you think did it? I've no idea. But if you'd asked me, you'd have liked to. I'll amend the question. Well, Dutch Snyder, for one. Two for two. I think Dutch ought to be enough to hold you for a while. A boy like Dutch should hold me for life. What do you have against Arthur? Arthur convinced him he was a man with contacts. I get it. How much did he nick Dutch for? I really don't know. But it must have been a substantial amount. Figures. That's quite an achievement to take money away from Mr. Schneider. I wonder if I could get in touch. I'll let you kids know if I score. All right, you guys, will you step on it? Those guys' tables, they'll be ready in time. Where's the roulette set up? Now, we've got it here, Dutch. Well, it's doing me no good in that case. Get it open. Hello, Dutch. Why, if it isn't the one and only Falcon. I thought they closed you up. They did. And what's all the activity for? Well, it gives the boy something to do. I'd like to see him occupied. It keeps him out of trouble. Oh. What's on your mind? Uh, can we talk someplace where there's less danger of me being hit on the head by a hammer? Sure. <laughs> Come in the office. Watch your step. I always try to. Sit down. Thanks. How about a shot of old smuggler? A wearing never says no. Soda? Just a squirt. There you are. Yeah. Salute. Salute. Yeah, this is good. All right, wearing. To what do I owe the pleasure? Well, for one thing, I was wondering whether you found a successor to Arthur Hall. A successor? Well, Arthur used to work for you, didn't he? Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mike. I could use a good contact man. Uh, I wish I could think of it. Oh, what's wrong with you? Me? Oh, I got a client. So what? So I'm afraid your interests are diametrically opposed. I'm working for Peggy Hall. Well, don't tell me the police believe she killed her husband. How did you know he was dead? Well, several sources. As a matter of fact, I think there was a flash on the radio about an hour ago. What did it say? Nothing much. Only that someone sent a 32 slug through Arthur's brain in his office, and the cops were holding a hot suspect. It is why. Well, that proves they're out of their minds. Why would Peggy kill him? Well, it seems Arthur signed everything he owned over to her, and she didn't want to give it back. Well, that's no motive. Well, I forgot to mention that everything Arthur owned amounted to close to $100,000. Hey. <laughs> you private detectives do all right. Well, there are detectives and detectives, Dutch. Now, Arthur had a few soft touches. He convinced a couple of clients he had political connections, and he was looking for a fat little fee each week. Yeah, you don't have to tell me. I was one of the principal contributors. So I've heard. What gets me is why the police haven't talked to you. Maybe they have. Why'd you tell them? Obviously enough to convince them I didn't murder Arthur. You want to try convincing me? Where's my percentage? How's your drink? A drink? Oh, fine. You want one for the road? Oh, I'm in no hurry. I can spare another few minutes. <laughs> Well, I can't. It's okay, Dutch. You don't have to beat me over the head. I can take a hint. I'll see you around the pool room. Hello, Dutch. Why, Kel. You're the last man I expected to see. Well, I hope you don't mind my dropping around. I, um... Brought over the Horowitz recording of the piano concerto. Oh? Yes, I thought maybe you'd like to compare it with the Rubenstein job. You, uh, really didn't come for that. Did you count? 
<laughs> I guess there's no use my trying to kid you. Huh? No use at all. Funny. I've known you uh, how long? Maybe uh, 24 hours, and yet I feel that there's a bond between us. Do you? Mm -hmm. Why, you know me better than I do myself. For example, I used to think I was incorruptible. <laughs> oh, come now. No, I mean it. I always prided myself that once I undertook uh, an assignment, nothing could swerve me from my purpose. But uh, you did, didn't you, Dutch? And you did it with money. Did I do that? Yes, you uh, put ideas in my head. Oh, get to the point, Count. Well, all I'm trying to say is that suddenly money has become tremendously important to me. So? So I want lots of it. And do I look like Fort Knox? Well, a reasonable facsimile. I uh, sold you your life at 9 o'clock last night for $10,000. That was pretty cheap, but... Why, I bet I could have gotten five times that. Easily, if I had that much here. Well, you better start raising it. Otherwise? Otherwise... I go to a fellow named Mike Wary. No. You wouldn't do that. Why not? I just don't think you would. Why, you're wrong, Dutch. How can I be? You admit I know you better than you do yourself. And I don't see you going to Mike Wary. I just don't see it. Let me see if we understand each other, Kel. I think we do now. And you'd be willing to repeat the same story to the cops? Why not? Well, you admitted that you'd been hired by Arthur Hall to take care of Dutch Schneider. Well, nothing happened to Dutch, did it? No. What can happen to me? You've got a nice logical mind. Thank you. Well, what do you think will be Dutch's reaction when he learns you've been up here? Well, I'm really not worried. You see, I can look after myself. Want me to prove it? Open your desk drawer. What? Go on. Start with the bottom one on the right. What are you talking about? You've got a recording machine somewhere in there, and you've been taking down every bit of this dialogue. How did you know that? Oh, you're talking to a man who keeps up with the latest in that field. I do a little home recording myself. Oh. But, uh, who thought of placing the microphone in the waste paper basket? Me? I picked it up from a story I once read. Well, really, it's a cute idea. Yeah. All right, Waring, get away from the desk. Put away the gun, Cal. I said get away from that desk. Don't get it. <laughs> How do you feel? Are you Oh, that's too bad. Uh, Next time, remember, you're not dealing with an amateur. I never audition for free. Listen, Chuck. And look ahead. Just take a little more water, Mike. No, no more. Come on, come on. Well, let me... Oh, now just take it easy. Now, take it easy, chum. Something new has been added. Huh? Yeah. Three stitches in your scalp. When when did you get here, Tiger? About an hour ago. Well, let me let me see that desk. Well, there's nothing to see there. No, you'll have to buy yourself a new recorder. Listen, Corbett, a boy named George Kelk was up here. Yeah, I know. Uh, you kept babbling his name. Well, he can clear Peggy oh, Hall. Now look, I Mike. tell you, I had the evidence on that machine. Oh, sure, sure. Will you stop trying to humor me? Arthur Hall originally hired this Kelk to bump Dutch Schneider. Only Dutch was lucky and bought his way out. Now, is that a strong enough motive for you? You mean for Dutch getting back at Arthur Hall? Yeah. Well, I'd be out of my mind to say it wasn't. Well, Kel can prove the whole business. Oh, 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 no, he can't. Look, Sergeant, I talked with the man. He told me that 9 o'clock last night he went up and braced Dutch. That's where you run into trouble. I don't see why. Well, that's because you haven't seen the autopsy report. Arthur Hall was dead at 8. What? That's right. <laughs> a full hour before Kel even got to Dutch. <laughs> yeah, you better get the aspirin, Mike. Your headaches are just beginning. In a moment, we'll continue with the adventures of the Falcon. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. If Georgie Kelk made me sick, Sergeant Corbett wasn't exactly what the doctor ordered either. When I refused to believe that Arthur Hall was killed an hour before he even met Dutch Schneider, the sergeant showed it to me in black and white. There you are. Now, will you behave? When did this autopsy report come through? Around 6.15 tonight. Why didn't you call me? I tried to, but you were out. Well, you could have left... No. You got any other leads? No. Your client, Mrs. Hall, still refuses to tell us what she did with the gun. What gun? 
Well, the one she bought three months ago in a pawn shop. Why? Well, to t- hear her tell it, she was afraid with Arthur away from home so often. That's possible. Sure. Why'd she buy it under a phony name? She's a woman. Oh, yes, of course. That explains everything. Well, how'd you finally run it down? Through the car. The pawnbroker remembered she was driving a blue sedan, and they got the first four numbers of the license. Pretty observant boy. What kind of a gun was it? A police special. Is that what was used on Hall? Could be. The slug we tried out of the wall was too battered to tell. Look, Corbett, Peggy didn't kill her husband. It's not in character. Oh, that's good. That's real good. <laughs> you spend all of 60 minutes with the girl, and already you've got her analyzed. I tell you... The... Wait a minute. Oh, if I'm not the original idiot, yes, boy. I've been saying that for years. Where's Peggy now? What do you expect? Well, I got to see her. I just thought of something. The way my mind is working lately, I can't take a chance of forgetting it. If there's anything I can do, Peggy, why, anything at all, just let me know. Thanks, Dutch, but I can't think of a thing. Mike Waring's taking care of everything. Well, much as I dislike the guy, I've got to admit he's capable, but if you want anybody else... Open him up, Sussman. Oh. Hello, Peggy. What happened to you? I used my head when I shouldn't have. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you had company. It's all right, Mike. I'm leaving. Don't on my account, Dutch. Uh, the sergeant here has a call out for Georgie Kelk. Kelk? Hadn't you heard? He was up to see me tonight. I didn't think he would. Why not? I didn't think he knew anything about Arthur's murder. You're right. He didn't. Oh, hey, Mike. You said there was something you wanted to ask Mrs. Hall. Oh, yes. I'm glad you reminded me, Sergeant. I almost forgot again. You got any plans for tonight, Peggy? That's not funny. I'm serious. I'd like to take you out. Hey, haven't I got anything to say about that? Don't get me wrong, Sergeant. With the housing shortage what it is, I wouldn't leave you with an empty room. Mr. Schneider can move in in her place. How about it, Dutch? What are you trying to say, Waring? You killed Arthur Hall. There. I said it, and I'm glad. I can't believe it. You can't believe what? Dutch Snyder killed Arthur. Suit yourself, Peggy. But it obviously had to be one of you. Well, in that case, I'm glad you picked on Dutch. Mm. What convinced you he's guilty? That gun you mislaid. What? Sergeant Corbett said it was a police special, and that's a 38 caliber job. What does that prove? Well, when I asked Corbett if he was positive the bullet was fired from the police special, he admitted they couldn't tell for sure. Yeah, I know. So how come when I first went to see Dutch Schneider, he knew definitely it was a thirty-two? Oh, of course. Dutch must have had inside information. The very best. <laughs> After the raid on his club, Dutch went to your home and beat the devil out of Arthur. Well, why didn't he kill him then? Well, Arthur must have promised to return the money he got for him. How could Arthur do that? Arthur had signed over practically everything he owned to me. Sure. And then when Dutch realized he had no chance of recouping, he went to your husband's office and killed him. But in between Arthur, in between that, I mean, Arthur hired Georgie Kelk. By the time Kelk located Dutch, Arthur was dead. Should I say that I'm sorry? Not if you don't feel like it. <laughs> but, uh... You don't want to let this prejudice you against all men. Oh, no, 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 I won't. No, I know now the type I can handle. And when I see one of the other kind, I'm going to start running. How do you recognize the other kind? Oh, that's easy. They're private detectives. Nice to wear. Mm-hmm.